My name is Frank Mazzella. I'm the Learning Products Manager for Vision Research. I'm here to present a series of PCC Phantom Camera Control Software Tutorials intended to show you many of the various features and processes incorporated in PCC. In this PCC tutorial, Defining the Application Preferences Part 1, we will walk through the various settings associated with defining the PCC Application Preferences. I'll start by clicking on the Application Preferences button, located at the bottom of the Managers tab, to open the Preferences dialog window. Let's start by defining the Interface Preferences options under the General tab. The first thing I need to decide is whether or not the PCC application will open up maximized or not. When enabled or checked, the PCC application opens to the full size of the controlling computer's monitor. The background color button is used to change the background color of the preview and play panels. To change the background color, click the background color button and select a basic color from the color palette or if you prefer click on the define custom colors button and select a general color then move the slider to the right to fine-tune the color once the desired color is reached click on the add to custom colors button notice the specified color has been placed under the custom colors area now click the OK button Notice that the specified color is now displayed as the background color button. Now click the OK button in the Preferences dialog window. When I open a camera's preview panel or a cine or image file in a play panel, notice the panel's background will be the color just specified. Vision Research recommends that if you change the background color, you use a neutral color to avoid losing the edge of the images being displayed. The last of the interface preferences is the Persistent Border Data at Cine Save feature. When enabled or checked, PCC is instructed to retain the last set of parameters defined via the Save Cine Border Data command. Border data will be covered in a subsequent video tutorial. So let's move over to the Units options. It is in this area where we will define the camera's exposure time, EDR, Extreme Dynamic Range Exposure Time, and the PDF, Post Trigger Frames. Notice that there are three presets buttons. Scientific sets the units so both the exposure time and EDR exposure time settings are the same in microseconds, and the post trigger value will be set by frames a specific number of post trigger frames. EDR will be covered in more detail in the Using EDR Extreme Dynamic Range tutorial and the post trigger value will be covered in the Capturing Your First Cine tutorial. Selecting percent changes the units so the exposure setting is set as a percentage of the maximum exposure value, EDR set as a percentage of the exposure setting, and PDF post trigger frames is set as a percentage of the maximum number of recordable frames. The maximum value of the exposure time depends on the period of the images which is 1 divided by the sample rate value. Selecting cinematography changes the units so that the exposure setting will be set in degrees or shutter angle, EDR as a percentage of the exposure setting, and the post trigger value as a set number of post trigger frames. Shutter angle represents the degree of the open segment of the shutter. The maximum value, 360 degrees, corresponds to a full period of the frame. I'm not, however, restricted to the presets. I can, if I so desire, click the unit I wish to change and select the unit definition from their respective pull-down selection list. For these tutorials, I'm going to use the scientific preset settings. The snapshot area specifies the application to be used when the snapshot toolbar button is selected. To demonstrate, I'm going to close the Preferences dialog window for a moment. When I click on the Snapshot button, MS Paint opens with the image that was being displayed in the Active Preview or Playback panel when I click the Snapshot Toolbar button. If I wanted to, I could perform some image adjustments on the image, 
and save the file to the location specified in the snapshot path field. Okay, let's close MS Paint and go back to the application preferences. The name and location of the file being saved via MS Paint is specified in the file name field and the file path is specified just below that. I'm going to leave these as is. The browse button next to the file path field allows me to navigate to the location I wish to save my snapshots if I so wanted to, but I'm going to leave these as is. So I'll just hit the cancel button here to close the browse for folder window. By default, Vision Research applies a smooth zoom Gaussian algorithm to the images being displayed in both the preview and play panels. Let me show you what I mean. First, I'm going to uncheck the smooth zoom feature. Then I'm going to click the OK button. Now I'm going to click the down arrow next to the zoom field and select to zoom in 16 times. I'll use the panel sliders to focus in on the edge of my subject. so you can see any pixelization that might occur from performing the digital zoom. Now I'll go back to the preferences dialog window and re-enable or check the smooth zoom feature then click the OK button. Notice that the pixelization has been greatly reduced. I'm going to leave the smooth zoom feature enabled. Let's go back to the preferences dialog window and talk about the use for GPU for processing feature. Many of today's graphic cards have a programmable processor unit which can be exploited as a general processing device. This processing unit is called a graphic processor unit or GPU. Given their highly parallel multi-core architecture, many GPUs show great computational power and are often used as coprocessors. When the using GPU for processing feature is enabled or checked, the GPU can be used to accelerate processing and displaying of CINE images and accelerate the processing process of CINE images during the save or convert operations. Both features are only available if the CINE meets certain requirements. For details on these requirements and detailed instructions on using this feature, please refer to the latest PCC help file accessed within the PCC application. The last of the imaging preferences is the image display transfer option. This field is used to specify the bit depth of the images being transmitted from the camera. It only affects the images being displayed, not the images being saved from the camera. The bit depth option preserves the behavior from previous versions of PCC. Both the 8 and 10p options reduce the data transferred and increase the transfer speed simultaneously. However, they will reduce or disable the availability of lower bit pixels used for increasing the apparent sensitivity of the camera. Both are used to reduce the image data size and accelerate the image transfer over the network. Neither affect the information stored in the camera saved to CINE files. The other options preferences are used to specify the language the PCC will be displayed in. As of this version, PCC supports English, Japanese, and Spanish. The Windows Settings option sets the graphical user interface to the same language the Windows operating system is set to. PCC will change the selected language when it's restarted. The Pixel Value Preferences determines how the pixel's bit depth or grayscale value range will be displayed in the RGB field of the PCC status bar. By default, this field is set to zero to max. What this means is that a pixel's bit depth will be displayed from zero, black, to its maximum grayscale value, saturation. Eight bits would be displayed as a range between zero and 255, 10 bits between zero and 1024, and 12 bits, zero and 4096. Selecting zero to 255 displays the pixel's grayscale value range between 0, black, and 255, saturation, regardless of the pixel's bit depth. 
Selecting 0.0, .0 to 1.0 displays the grayscale value as a percentage of the available grayscales between 0, black, and 1, saturated. When the Ignore Data Acquisition Board's preference is enabled, or checked, PCC ignores the data captured from any attached signal acquisition capture boards, and uses simulated signals during the capture. When the Cine Slider Tooltip Preference is enabled, or checked, PCC will display the corresponding image inside the mark in and mark out points only when the cursor is placed over the Cine Editor Bar in the Play Panel. Let me show you what I mean. First I need to enable this feature, then click the OK button. Now I'll click on the Play tab. Notice, as I move the cursor over the Cine Editor Bar, the image corresponding to its location in the Cine is displayed along with its image number. Before we move on with the remaining Preferences tabs, Let's reset the general preferences back to the factory default settings by clicking on the default button. We will cover the measurement, logging, and camera tab options in part 2 of the Defining the PCC Application Preferences tutorial.